Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Jake Makes. Today we're going to be talking about the human firing catapult that I built with the great folks over at the King of Random, way off in Utah, like way over there. They've got a great video up on it over there. They've got a great video over on their channel of the whole thing. Go watch that right now. Leave this video. Open a new tab. Leave this video. Go watch that. However, their video did not uh, go in depth. Um, Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Specifically, how stupid of an idea this was. Basically, in this video, I want to go over every possible way we could have died. <laughs> but didn't. At first, it seems fairly straightforward. You build a catapult large enough to launch a 150-pound projectile. You stick a seat on the end of the swing arm, and what else is there to it, right? Where do I even start? I The design. So, there's actually a number of different ways you could do this, and it would totally work. I thought about doing a trebuchet, gravity-powered. You know, you have a big counterweight. That's what swings the uh, arm around really fast. Thought about powering it with a giant pneumatic piston, which would have been really cool, except none of us has ever done anything with pneumatics like that, so it would have been a big learning curve. It also probably would have been pretty expensive. Then, like, what do you attach the piston to if you're still building it with a wood frame or for that matter do you even do a wood frame we thought about doing this entirely out of steel but the king random wasn't set up for a welding project of that magnitude actually they weren't set up for a metal working project of that magnitude forget about welding all things considered a basic tried and true wood framed catapult seemed like the best way of doing it so then i'm surfing through google images looking at medieval catapult designs right i'm thinking okay we'll just literally stick a seat like a chair on the end of this swing arm. So then I'm envisioning actually sitting in the thing, right? You'd end up sitting on it backwards. There's like, would be this massive cross beam right in front of you. And you're supposed to catapult over that. And that thing is going to take all of the force, that massive swinging arm that you're on, it's going to stop all of that really, really hard and fast. And then suddenly I'm envisioning somehow slipping off the seat as I'm firing, and I literally just get cut in half by this stop bar. And that would suck. I, I didn't like that thought at all, so I come up with a completely new catapult design, which essentially just totally rips off a trebuchet and then just sticks rubber in place of the counterweight and sticks a stop bar on the underside of it so that no matter what happens, the human is never in any danger of getting cut in half. If we made this catapult out of two by fours, it would have freaking exploded or imploded. Kablooey. So instead we made it out of six by sixes, just freaking beams, solid, like your mom. We built a half-scale prototype to help hammer down the design and how the whole thing would go together. But then, uh, this happened. Ready, three, yep. two, one. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> Dang it! And suddenly, the dangers of this catapult became all too apparent. All the little ways that you could die doing this, you don't realize when you're just, you know, drawing the design on paper. You don't get the launch angle right, you don't put quite enough rubber on it, and instead of the human landing in the nice, soft, squishy water, they land right back down on the hard, crunchy catapult. Ouchie. And then this happened. The reason that happened was because stupid head here forgot to reinforce that whole front section. That entire front section of the catapult was only held on by two Dexacruz. I completely forgot to reinforce it, but it brought to mind suddenly another danger that could, that could happen. If the frame is not solid enough, you could get something like that happening, where hundreds of pounds of six by six go straight up and then rain back down upon you as you're sitting in the bucket ready to launch. Yeesh. See what I mean? The more you get into this, like the more you realize it's such a terrible idea. I decided to use 3 8 inch bolts to bolt the entire thing together. 
Now, three eighths inch bolts have a shear strength of 2,500 pounds and a tensile strength of 5,000 pounds, which is way more than enough considering we ended up having like a million bolts and the draw weight of course gets divided between them all. So there was no fear of the bolts themselves failing, shearing, and then everything exploding. There was no fear of that because 3 8 inch bolts are strong enough. But that's just the bolts. What if the wood splinters around? The bolts. I mean, there's not like a handy table online you can you can look up to tell you how much a 6x6 can hold. Like that information is not out there. You can't find it. I looked. This whole project sort of devolved into educated guesstimates. I mean, I was 99.999% sure that the 6x6s would be strong enough. That's why we use 6x6s, but there's always, you know, that 0.0001%. Of course, that's not the only thing that could fail. There's also the metal brackets that are holding the actual 6x6s together that the bolts are going through. We attach the 6x6s together with these 16 gauge steel straps that had holes punched in them. That was not ideal. Ideally, you would have had like 8 inch solid steel brackets that would have been much, much larger, that would have spanned more area. <laughs> COVID. The fear is twofold. One, that the 16 gauge steel is too thin, it'll stretch, it'll pull apart, it'll break. Two, that the holes drilled through the 6x6 are going to be too close to the end. The closer your holes are to the end of your wood, obviously, the greater chance the wood is going to split. If you have larger brackets, you can then go farther in. We didn't do those ideal steel brackets because that steel would have cost a lot more and it would have taken forever to drill the holes through thicker steel. You gotta keep in mind we're on a serious time and money crunch at this point. Whatever the budget was, we blew it completely out of the water and I was there for like three weeks. Everything took way too long. Instead, I doubled up those 16 gauge straps everywhere so that they were, you know, more equivalent to 1 8 inch solid steel, even though they weren't. And then we also put an added oh crap strap around the outside just for extra, extra, extra security. And it actually held together beautifully. As it turned out, I really didn't need to be worried about any of these parts because the frame was rock freaking solid like your mom. This catapult didn't end up having near enough draw weight to remotely come close to tearing this frame apart. The pivot pin that the swing arm pivoted around as well as the rubber attachment points were all one and a half inch steel pipe. Super, super strong, did not even flex under full draw weight. So any fears of like steel somehow bending and then bands coming loose or like steel breaking and then giant steel pipes being swung around on the ends of bands, totally unfounded. That was not a fear we needed to be thinking about. Another thing I thought considerably about was the winch coming loose. That was like near top of my list of bad things I didn't want to happen. Because the winch actually weighed a considerable amount. Probably like 30 pounds. That was a hefty sucker. I was just envisioning like you're cranking it down. You get in it and you're about to pull the trigger but instead the winch completely rips out. Yeah. That would really be bad. Fortunately, I foresaw that possibility and made sure the winch was sandwiched in the corner of the frame by like 25 bolts. Like, seriously, there was no possible way that winch could come loose unless the entire frame ripped itself apart. And of course that wasn't going to happen. At this point, we were planning on literally screwing a chair to the swing arm, which would have been so hilarious. When I started to think about it, um, it was late at night, of course. I was staring at the catapult as I was wont to do, trying to make sure we wouldn't die. This is gonna be swinging really fast. There's gonna be G-forces involved. Once it goes, the projectile is not going to have a lot of time to react to anything. So if you somehow like started slipping out of the chair or were sitting in it wrong, or there was a bit of play in the catapult, so I didn't know if it was gonna like do something wonky as it fired you. I was thinking maybe possibility of you falling off like mid swing or the scale of this thing is so huge too. You know, you don't think about it, but when the swing arm is sticking straight up, it's 20, 23 feet off the ground. You do not want to fall from that. Then I realized there's gonna be some centrifugal force here. The catapult swings you in an arc. So you're literally going to be like trying to fly off the chair as you swing around. 
flat. It might not have been a problem at all, like you might have just been able to hold onto the bottom of the chair, not a big deal. We didn't know. Then I thought, okay, maybe we could turn the chair upside down. So when it swings, it'll push you into the seat and you won't go flying off. However, then I was thinking, if it's not fast enough to create those centripetal forces, it's not swinging fast enough to counteract gravity, and as it moves up, you start sliding down. I had a big brain moment. Light bulb. Light bulb. And instead we bought a giant storage bin and we attached that on so you can't fall down it, you can't go off of it, you can't roll off side to side, perfectly contains you, dumps you out. Throughout this whole project, I naively had not been worried at all about what would happen like when he actually hit the water. I'd never been like cliff jumping or anything before, so I just thought, I've, I've seen videos of people jumping off heights into water, they were fine, so we'll be fine. Like worst case scenario, what can happen? We just, you know, get the breath knocked out of us. As it ended up, it was pretty much impossible to control how your body twisted in the air once you got launched off of this thing. Like Grace is actually a trained gymnast and she's still splatted. <laughs> <laughs> I knew from the second it went up, I was toast. <clears throat> I think I was laying, I tried to get my back completely on the bottom of it. So when it actually fired, I don't know, you can see in the video, like I could not right myself and I just went flat on my back. <clears throat> Wind totally knocked on me. It's gonna be an hour till I can breathe normally again. <laughs> I analyzed the video of Grace's first launch and figured out she traveled roughly 45-ish feet in only 1.1 seconds. 28 miles per hour. For reference, this is a car hitting a wall at 30 miles an hour. That's kind of pretty fast. I mean, just the height of the bucket off of the water, just the height we're falling from is 26 feet, roughly. Or eight meters, which for reference, the Olympic high dive is 10 meters. So it's not like absurdly high to dive into water, but if you can't control how your body hits, yeah, that's not like, you know, something to sneeze at. Plus, we were wearing life jackets and helmets, so we had more buoyancy, more surface area, so it was even harder of an impact than it would have been otherwise. As it was, we were fine. Um, I mean, it freaking hurt, but no actual injury. In hindsight, I am glad the catapult wasn't any more powerful, <laughs> or as powerful as I hoped it would be, because it would have, yeah, it would have hurt. Or possibly actually, you know, broken something, like my neck. Ah, now for the part that did actually break. So the breakage, I guess we should go ahead and examine that. As you can see, it broke right, like literally right on the pivot which is exactly what I expected. To me, this was always the big question mark for this build. This swing arm had to be strong enough to withstand a thousand pounds of force as it turned out. It's gotta be super strong, it's gotta be super light, and it's gotta be able to be 18 feet long without too much flex. We thought about using, like, making it out of steel. We thought about making it out of, like, aluminum ladders strapped together, An aluminum I-beam, steel I-beam. Eventually, we settled on the genius thing, which was to actually make our own wood I-beams. Based on the performance of the half-scale model, I thought that two of these strapped together of those size would be strong enough. That was not correct. I knew the second time we fired it, this thing was not gonna be enough. Every time we fired it, it got weaker. Also started making weird creaking sounds. The wood glue apparently wasn't strong enough, or maybe we didn't put enough. Some of the wood glue we used was old. I don't know exactly why. You can literally see it in the video. It starts bending more and more every time we fire it. So essentially, we had to make a decision whether it was worth the risk to proceed with shooting ourselves, or if we should just basically totally scrap the whole video and all the work up to that point. In the end, we decided to go ahead, which seems super irresponsible except the projectile and the people around it weren't actually in any danger, here's why. The only place that thing could have broken was the pivot, because that's the force concentration, that's also the weakest point, because it's got a hole drilled right through it. The projectile is only climbing into the firing seat when it is 
fully conked down, which means the end of the arm is pretty much like at most three feet above the ground. That means the person in the bucket, if it snaps here, totally fine. Literally the only thing that will happen, that portion of the swing arm will fall to the ground with gravity. It'll only drop three feet, person will be fine. The stop bar is preventing that whole section from, you know, firing back towards the humans. Nothing will be going off to the sides, which is where someone's standing to trigger the catapult. So, even though we knew there was a fair possibility that the arm could break, we went ahead with shooting ourselves anyway, and it, it went pretty good. Calculated risk. <laughs> Probably the most dangerous part of the whole thing was just driving to the test site, as weird as that seems. Check out.